On this episode of the John 1911 podcast, a 911 drug bust, the Spa's 12 project is done. Remington and Colt cry uncle. And yes, we have a missile launcher. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. This is Marky and Freeze, and this is episode 57 of the John 1911 podcast. A little bit late today, Freeze. How was your day so far? I've been actually pretty busy. Been running errands all morning. Yeah, that's why we're doing this. I mean, it's rare that we do a podcast in the afternoon. Not that, you know, our listeners ever know, but, I mean, they listen to it whenever. But we typically do these early. But I've been in the armory all day just kind of um, drinking coffee and plotting and planning and working on projects. So no big deal. Yeah, I'm I'm already into my, you know, I've had my two pots of coffee already. So I'm. it's, you know, I'm coffeed out at this point you you coffeed out well you know what i'm gonna go ahead and say this because uh, we're getting a lot more traction and uh you know people are paying attention to us and kind of what's going on and you know we're very appreciative and it's you know it's always flattering we we have these conversations anyway we had received an email <laughs> um that we had been selected as one of the top 100 gun blogs on the internet and i was like Okay, these people obviously want some money. So I, I, I looked, and it seems to be a list, and we're on it. I guess it's run by one of the uh, offline RSS feeder services. And um, well, I, you know, and I looked, and I said, okay, so it seems legit. They don't want money from us, and we're number fifty six. I sent it to you, and I'm like, hey, dude, check this out. And you came back with, do you remember? Oh yeah, I remember quite well. Um, this, this would be a good time to say okay, it. <laughs> okay, let me let me preface this by saying that there's there's a couple guys like us sitting there uh, saying, okay, this is how we're going to survive in the internet world, and we're going to make a top 100 list of gun blogs and and radio blogs and TV blogs and hot rod car blogs and send it out to all these blog people or, or, or podcast people or whatever. Because, look, anytime you make a list of the top 100 blogs and – Handgun Control Inc. is like number I don't know ten. On, was it on that, that high? Uh, I it, I don't think it was as high as ten, but it wasn't like eighty either. Yeah. It was it it was higher than us. Yeah, I <laughs> said it to you, and I was like, dude, check it out. We're on this weird list. I don't know anything about it. And you came back, and you're like, why is Brady campaign on it? And I'm like, oh fuck me. Yeah, it's like I don't really necessarily know if I want to be, uh, you know, in the top 100 uh, podcast list with the Brady campaign. Yeah. You know, and then the thing is, there was there was two or three other podcasts on there that were anti-gun podcasts, like you know, like the, oh really? The, yeah, like the Chicago Coalition to ban all guns and knives and shit. I mean, I made oh, that up. Okay. But, See, I didn't. But, go, I didn't itemize the whole list. I just looked for us and was like, okay, where are we at? Because it's all about us. <laughs> so. No, I, I mean, I, I mean, I I went down the list because I was trying to figure out their demographics because they have like a chart of, you know, of how many followers, how many listeners, and then they had this other bit of data on there that I, I probably could have figured it out if I would have tried. But, you know, because I was looking at all these people that, you know, are above us and below us and and looking at their numbers and stuff. And then once I started seeing, you know, uh, two, three, maybe four anti-gun podcasts, it's like, well, you know what? I really don't care about this list a whole hell of a lot. And I'm probably not going to dedicate any more time to figure out what all these numbers mean because, Honestly, if you're going to put us on the same podcast list as the Brady campaign, ah, man, you know, the list doesn't mean a lot to me. Well, here's uh, because I, I look, just, well, hold on. Let me let me go ahead. And inter, let me insert some Internet search engine optimization trick. And I think a lot of people are probably aware of this. And I mean, if they're not, they realize it. If people have no, and it's been real popular the past like two years, if you have noticed that there's there's a plethora of articles or videos or posts by various groups. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be the firearms community, but it certainly is there. Um, the internet reward, they figured out that the internet and people that surf the internet reward posts that do things like the top five 1911s to own, the top best guns of World War, top five best guns of World War II, the top 10 best whatever lists like that. 
people, they're almost like clickbait. People automatically will click them, and that drives traffic. So these people who sent us, they're just compiling all of these lists because they're doing some kind of hustle to try to to try to drive artificial traffic so they can get ranked with Google. And so they've apparently, this, this is an example where you get somebody that doesn't know shit about guns or doesn't know shit about cars or doesn't know shit about whatever it is they're making the list on. They just, you know, they just data mine the stuff, make a list, publish it, and don't realize they look like jackasses. Well, exactly, because, you know, the, the Brady campaign talks about, you know, guns all the time. So, oh, they must be a gun blog. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I guess by the strictest definition, maybe, but, you know, you know, anti-gun blog, you know, whatever. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Drinking my uh, cup of love and just laughing. I was just like, okay, yeah, whatever, dude. Yeah. I, I, I was like, ah, oh, the, the, the freeze is always there <laughs> to <laughs> give us a reality check. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um because, you know, I was pretty, j- you know, I mean, you, you sent me, uh, you, you forwarded the email to me and I read it. And the first thing was like, you know, what the hell is this bullshit? And then it's like, well, wait a minute. No, you know, we've been putting a lot of time. Now, and now, dude, I'm going to stop you right there. You know, as well as I do, what it really was when I send you shit like that, the first thing went through your mind is how much is this going to cost us? Well, OK, y- yeah, you're yeah. right, because. Yeah, that's always the first thing that goes through my mind, regardless, you know. Because um, it's true. We, dude, yeah. when we were running tactical t-shirts, it was nonstop. People basically, I mean, they would they would hit us up for, oh, you know, I want to be on a shooting team, or I want to do this, or I want to do that, or I want to sponsor you, or we can team up together and do, you know, do pig hunting. And at the end of the day, it basically was, it's going to cost me, me money. Yeah, give me money. And, yeah. and, the, and the problem is... There's no return on our end. It's like give us money, and you're not going to get any type of a return out of it. You know. Yeah. And but you know, and and the thing is, we've sponsored a couple uh, a couple you know people to do some shooting events and stuff, and and it wasn't about getting a return. It was just about some people that we know. liked, and we just did it. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, but all we these weren't... all these strangers reach out to us and basically are like, you know, what can we do for you? But you don't want to do anything for us. Yeah, that's what it is most of the time. I think I just did. You just do something on your uh, on your audio. Yeah, I muted my mic. For okay, a all right, it popped or something. So I just want to make sure you were still there. Hey, you know yeah. what? I want to talk about something funny before well, we. It, it, it's funny you mentioned that because I have a funny little blurb too. Well, let, well, you know what? We will have a let's have a let's have a uh, let's have a uh, a little competition. Then let me let me pull up the actual article. And I will give you the the headline as uh, I have it here. Councilman who fought Blue Lives Matter logo on township police cars is charged with drug dealing. Ooh, man, that's going to be hard to beat. (laughs) That's going to be hard to beat, but I think I might have that. In Cattlesburg, Kentucky, apparently the local PD had some Uh, kind of Blue Lives Matter Punisher logo, and, you know, this guy... Okay, as soon as you said what Cattlesburg, <laughs> I'm sorry, not Cattlesburg. It's Catlet. I'm, I apologize to Cattlesburg, wherever you're at. It's Catletsburg, Kentucky. Oh my God! It's uh, what was the uh, uh, the the big series of movies they've had out? Um, Is that the same town? No, I don't know, but wasn't one of the one of the 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 characters' names Catlit or something like that? I don't, dude. I don't watch television. <laughs> no, this was this is these are movies. Ah, whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't. Yeah. So, okay. So what, well, that's what you got. Okay. I, okay. So you heard about Spicer getting uh, getting ambushed in the Apple Store by um, by. Uh, some chick named Cherie, I don't know, Chaham, Chawham, something like that. I actually it, saw the video she published. Okay, I did not actually watch the video. However, it gets better because, um, you know, she goes in there and she, you know, throws a barrage of questions and, you know, and she's got her phone in his face and, you know, asking him, you know. She was calling him a Nazi and stuff. Yeah, fascist. An Apple store. Okay, now, the, the quote is... Um, 
you know, she's asking him, you know, what it, you know, how it feels to work with fascist, you know, for a fascist and all this kind of good stuff. And Spicer's quote was such a great country that allows you to be here. Okay. And that now. That's what she, he said. That's what he said to her. That's what he said to her. I don't specifically remember that, but maybe it was. Okay. Well, know. so she has come back for a second bite at the apple because apparently she didn't, she was so caught up in her ranting and raving. She didn't either hear or pay attention to the comment when he made it. And she caught it when she was listening to the playback. So, oh, oh dude, let come on. She came back for a second by the apple because this is her 15 minutes of fame. Yes. Let's be, but let's be now, real. Now, now, now here's the fun part. Okay. Okay. The quote was such a great country that allows you to be here. Now she is a U.S. citizen born and raised here in the United States. So she's her, she's taking that as it's a racist comment and a personal threat to her because she feels he was threatening to have her thrown out of the country. Oh, God. Yeah, seriously. Seriously. Yeah. He, well, he, well, you know, that's just people just wanting to make shit up so they can just be offended. You know, whatever. I mean, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, you know, um, yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, um, these perpetually, if I got to be honest with you, my story's better. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> I win. It is. Okay, okay, but hold on a second. I've got a backup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want a second bite at the apple too? Okay. Yes, I do. Okay. Because you know, because uh, uh, you want a do over? Okay. You no, know, my white privilege allows me a second bite at the apple. Uh, all right. Yeah, do you know what they call? Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you know what they call <laughs> you in this neighborhood? The white guy. <laughs> uh, I actually, um, what they call me is, um, mm. don't, don't even go there. Cause they call you all kinds of shit yeah, they <laughs> every do. day. They, I don't want to have to bleep yeah. all that crap. Out. Uh, no, they, they, I, I prefer the term saltine American. Okay. So, so anyway, um, you heard about the, uh, Amy Schumer's comedy thing on Netflix that just got totally slammed. I mean, just totally Oh, I, I, you know, look, I've heard a little bit about it, and I've heard that, you know, look, the the end of the day, the argument that she, the problem she's got is she wants to be a political animal, but then she doesn't want to suffer uh, any financial or professional consequences when she alienates at least 50, if not 56 or 70 percent of the country. You well, know, if she was just a comedian... Well, I didn't. I didn't watch her show because, frankly, uh, I don't think Amy Schumer's funny. I never have. Thought I she actually don't. Funny. I, I actually don't think she's funny either. But um, and I mean, this even goes back before Trump and before her. You know, before she started getting you know all political. I mean, this goes back several years. I just don't find the woman funny. I think I just. I mean, I can sit there and watch an hour long comedy special from her and I won't crack a smile the whole time. She's just not funny to me. Yeah, she, I'm yeah. sure she's funny yeah. to other people. That's fine. However, her reviews are so bad on Netflix. I mean, she got slaughtered. So this is her spin. She's blaming the alt right trolls for going in there and giving her all the, uh, all the negative feedback. You know, of course she's blaming the alt right for her, for her not being funny. Um, so, okay, and that you expect that. that That's expected. But here's what's interesting, and I just heard this today. Netflix, because of all the negative feedback, and I guess they paid Amy Schumer a shit ton of money for this Netflix exclusive special. Netflix has decided that their star rating system that they have for every show, movie, and everything on Netflix, they are they are changing their entire rating system for their shows. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, you know, I mean uh Look, there's a there's a problem here. Uh, there's two problems here, and one of them I'm sympathetic with, 
you know, the first problem is what I described with Amy Schumer, and basically she wants to play it both ways. And, you know, if you want to be, you know, it's it's like, um, oh, what's that guy? A lot of our customers know who this dude is because they watch these movies. The Jason Bourne <coughs> movies. Who's that little dude that plays Jason oh, Bourne? Oh, uh, Matt Damon. Yeah. Matt, is that his? Okay, so anyway, that yeah. guy, he... um. Yeah, you know, like he wants he, he wants to make all these movies where he's basically blasting, you know, hundreds of people on three continents. Yeah, but then wants to come out and then stake out a position on gun violence and gun control. And it's like, okay, I mean, don't be surprised, dude, when you start having issues on either one side or the other side of this argument. You know, and Amy Schumer's got the same problem. However, I am sympathetic to Netflix because the truth is. Because, dude, we've had it happen to us. We've had, like, lefty trolls, people that aren't our customers, they aren't our friends, they're not our fans. They've rolled into our media properties, and they've tried to bury us or threaten us or do all kinds of shit to us. And it skews the, the, the you know, the direction of whatever it is that we're engaged in. And we've had to go in and basically heavily moderate and change how we do shit. So, you know. Uh, okay. I, I'm okay. sympathetic to Netflix. No, that. Uh, okay, that's fine. Um, however, there are several <clears throat> comedians on Netflix, because I have Netflix and I watch it all the time. Um, oh, that's right, you do. See, I don't I don't ever... Well, the, but, the only but, knowledge but, I have of Netflix is from the social media side of the business and how well they are as a, quote, Netflix has moved from a like a blockbuster model to a content creator model. That's about all I know about Netflix. Okay. Well, there are several comedians that have specials on Netflix that, hell, there's one guy on there who his his whole thing is nothing but an hour-long Trump slam. Um, there's a lot of liberal comedians on there, and you know what? M- m- most they, of them are. Yeah, but you know what? They all have like four and five star ratings, though. I mean, you know, look, I don't, you know, I, I honestly don't think that Amy Schumer's miserable rating is just a bunch of uh, alt right trolls, as she calls them, going in there and slamming her just because she's Amy Schumer and they don't like her. I truly believe that it's because, I mean, I'm sure she's getting some of that. But a lot of it's just because she's not freaking funny. You know, the market will decide that because, you know, I'm sure she's experiencing some of it. But look, I'm going to look. Look, I have to separate what I think is funny versus my politics. And also, I have to separate what I think is funny versus what I think is funny after hearing it for 30 times. Okay, here's a perfect example. And I don't watch Saturday Night Live, but I occasionally will, will see the highlights. And when Saturday Night Live does, when they got Alec Baldwin to do, originally do the Donald, the, you know, I think it was Alec Baldwin. He, they, he does his Donald Trump impersonation. Or they yeah. got the other guy to do his Bernie Sanders impersonation. You know, I'll be honest with you. I thought that shit was pretty funny. I was like, okay, that's pretty funny. That's pretty good. But here's the thing. It becomes like a knock-knock joke. It's yeah. like, how many times can I hear the same goddamn joke? You know, and, and, well, and no, and, I mean, no, you're right. I mean, you know, you're right. And, you know, Amy Schumer may have had like <laughs> one joke or one good movie or one thing, but I think on balance, you know, I, I again, I, I've never really found her funny where there's other people or other, you know, liberals and quote Hollywood in general that I think are really talented. Here's a topical response to this. Look, Snoop Dogg has come out and made a video basically, you know, killing you know they, they assassinated donald trump or a donald trump clown in this video look yeah. with that being said i'm not going to bullshit you there's some stuff that snoop dogg has done that is like you know his content his songs his raps and this is going to come to a shock to a lot of our listeners dude a lot of that stuff is really 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 good and really well written now he may have done it 10 15 years ago but i'm not going to you know i'm not going to uh, you know, take away from him his talent, but I'm also not going to be all ass hurt and be surprised and be like, fuck Snoop Dogg, fuck this motherfucker. It's like, surprise, Snoop Dogg doesn't like fucking Donald Trump. Oh, wow, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> you know, holy shit, really? Stop the presses. Well, you know? I mean, look, I mean, he's been an out, uh, he's been a very vocal anti Trump person. I mean, you know, from even back when he was campaigning. Oh, dude, so, I can even do this so, in our industry. Like, who is it? Who's the. 
if I'm not, I'm going to say both companies, and I don't know which one it is. You know what? I'm going to list three companies, and I don't know which one of these three is not guilty of this. So, you know, you have to do your own homework to figure this out for yourself. But it's either Cooper Firearms or Dakota Firearms, one of those custom, higher-end, hunting, lightweight, mountain climbing, you know, goat-shooting gun companies. They're big Democrats. They give all kinds of money to, like, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. And then there's that company up in Cleveland, the... uh Team Wendy, they do all the they do all the SWAT hats. They're okay. huge goddamn Democratic supporters. And there's a guy, you know, they got a huge blowback. We even did a story on it. And there's a guy now who's kind of up and coming and he's trying to, you know, he's a former Marine and he's trying to like, you know, become a personality in the firearms industry, and he's all up and down Team Wendy's shit. And I'm I you know, I'm I'm not saying anything to the dude, but part of me's like did you realize, I mean, like, they literally hosted Hillary Clinton in their facility and, you know, during the 2016 presidential cycle. They gave her money, and not only do they give her money, they gave money to, like, Charlie Rangel, and they give, I mean, they give money to people that has nothing to do with Cleveland. Yeah. And this all came out, you know, but, you know, so it, so look, if, if I go, if I see someone with the Team Wendy hat on, am I going to have a complete fucking meltdown? No, but you know, part of me's like, oh yeah, those are fucking assholes that try to take my guns away. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I don't even know who Team Wendy is. Yeah, because you're I mean, on I've, the tactical I've, side. You're I've, the hunter I've, guy. I've, yeah, Did you I know mean, who I've, Dakota I've heard, or Cooper was. Yeah, I know. I do know that, and and I do know the event where they they hosted Hillary Clinton and all that. I'm I'm familiar with that. Yes. So, hey, there was a uh, there was a fake story on. Um, on the on on the media outlets and we I didn't publish it because I I noticed it because it's military surplus and ordinance related but um turns out it probably was a setup and it was a couple years old there was a report out of uh, Egypt some guy I think he was a cop and he claimed to have found a launch tube to an SA7 anti aircraft missile in a junkyard dump it was like maybe a mile or two outside of whatever local airport and it got all kinds of it got all kinds of press in Europe, and then some of the media outlets here in the U.S. picked it up. And then they, you know, did a bunch of research, and people figured out this story's bogus. Guy basically went, found this tube, dropped it somewhere, took a photograph of it, then tried to make himself famous. And you know, they're all kind of all disappointed, and everyone's kind of gnashing their teeth about fake news and all this. And I'm kind of laughing because every time that I have done an Armory Chat live video. That same make and model of anti aircraft weapon <laughs> sits right behind me on the wall. <laughs> it's That's like, if awesome. you guys are so interested in that thing, just watch us. Well, I got one. There's literally one. It's three feet behind my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's got, I mean, it's got the electronics box. It's got the sights on it. It's got, I mean, it's, you know, you know, it's a fire. <laughs> forget. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's, you can't reload them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, just interesting, you know, people that, you know, it, it depends on how you how you package and you present stuff as far as how, you know, whether it gets picked up or does whatever. OK, look, I know we're going to I know this is going to be a heavy duty like pseudo political podcast, and I'm just <laughs> trying to stay away from it as long as I can. I just want to stay on the fun shit. I got another good one for you. Okay. you ready for this one? Casper, Wyoming. Now, this one goes back to, like, 2015, but I just heard of this. I don't know if you heard of this one. Uh, man, let's see here. Wyoming man found with 30 eyeballs in his anal cavity. What? Now, this is 2015, so this is old news. This isn't new news. Um, I don't. They're not human. I'm looking at the eyeballs. They're not human eyeballs. Oh, they're like taxidermy eyeballs or something like that. Yeah, it looks like he may be uh, from a slaughterhouse. Uh, Pig eyeballs. <laughs> Tilbot assured police the eyeballs are not human, but instead cow eyeballs. He had pilfered from Johnson Meats, a slaughterhouse where Tilbert was employed as a butcher. Now, this could even end up being like fake bullshit news because I wasn't going to put that much time into it. But as soon as... Excuse me. As soon as I saw this, I was like, oh, I got to tell Freeze about this one. This is fucking <laughs> awesome. Bovine eyeball from Tivitz rectum. A total of 30 were found. 
Quote, okay. company won't let us take animal scraps home, and it said, and it said, toss them in the landfill, Tibbetts said. They're a very wasteful company. We should be allowed to take scrap meat and other parts home. The company should start a green and... Oh, my God! Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa. He doesn't like the fact that they throw it in a landfill, so he shoves them up, up his, his ass? ass? What was he going to do? Like, fart them out and eat them? Oh, dude, there was a girl... Um, Oh man! I don't remember if this was in Louisiana. We we didn't talk about it because we got you know actually got wrapped up in like you know real stuff. This woman, <laughs> she was out driving, and she um, there was a uh, I think it was a I think it was a truck that was loaded with cages of chickens, <laughs> and so she decided she's a vegetarian, and so she literally goes kamikaze. She takes her little and it was like her little car and like whatever kind of car it was. And she starts ramming this truck carrying these chickens. Yeah. And then she speeds <laughs> off. So this guy's just driving around in the middle of the day. The weather's good. You know, visibility's good. The roads are dry. <laughs> this little car starts crashing into his truck. And then it just takes off. <laughs> and uh, they eventually, they found her. I think, I don't know if she left a part of her car there or they saw the damage. But they eventually tracked her down. And uh, she's like, basically, her entire argument was going green because she was offend- she was offended. Yeah, that this I I think it was chickens. I mean, it could have been like pigs or something, but it was some kind of animal. This thing was was carrying around, and she decided to go all like you know, you know, yeah, quasi you know, whatever. Yeah, I think I I heard a blurb on that. I think it was chickens. Yeah. Oh, here's one that hits close to home for you. You ready for this one? Yeah. Did you hear about the woman who works for CPD? Let me find this. I know you had to hear about this one. I know you did. Let me, uh, CPD dispatcher who was arrested in a big drug, uh, in a big drug sting. Okay. Um, hold on. Come on. They, uh, let me see here. She's a, um, she works as a, she's a senior level person at a, um, uh, at, uh, here we go. She's a, uh, supervisor at the 911 call in center. Uh, Okay. And she was, I mean, listen to these numbers, dude. Um, a Monday traffic stop in Ohio's Butler County following a months long investigation. So that wasn't really a traffic stop. That was a, you know, rolling, you know, that was a rolling sure. hit. Yeah. Um, which is real common if you're in the yeah, dope yeah. game and you're going to get busted. They're going to bust you when you're transporting. Just, oh, yeah. But we don't have a lot of dopers listening to this podcast. Um, sure. a, <laughs> a Monday traffic stop in Ohio's Butler County following a months long investigation has turned up nearly 600 pounds of marijuana. Dick Jones, no, that, I always that, call him, that, I always call him that, Dick Jones. Uh, 600 pounds, that's vehicle, a weekend. The vehicle that was stopped was a semi with about 400 pounds of marijuana well hidden within the walls of the vehicle. So this was, uh, here's the thing. In total, eight people, including a Cincinnati Police Dispatcher supervisor, were arrested in connection to the bust. The dispatcher, Tennille Poole, or Pooley, Poole, had over 200 pounds. She had over 200 pounds of marijuana in her home. Nice. Paul worked for CPD for 13 years. Now, here's here's the payoff on this. The traffickers, Jose Antonia Santiago Razo, 32, and Brandon Giosa, 19, and Miguel Alberto Trio, 38, and Oscar Paz Diaz, 20, were charged with possession and trafficking of drugs. Bottom line, here's the real story here. This is Mexican mafia. This is This is cartel stuff. These are these are hooked up with the same guys that wiped out that uh, entire family of uh, pot growers up north. Uh, in uh, it is likely the same same you know arching organization. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So you know, of course, they don't they don't report that in the news. But this is this is the I mean, this is uh, this is Mexican cartel stuff here. I mean, this is major. This is major volume. You know, this isn't like somebody packing pounds in the back of their Lincoln Town car driving from Atlanta. I mean, this is organized tractor trailers. 
you yeah. know, which is this, which is how the now the the real volume gets moved around. And I, I have you heard about that one? Um, no, no, I haven't. Strangely enough, really, I so I figured you probably would have heard about it from some of the uh, some of the CPD guys. So um, <coughs> no, um, well, you no, know what? Actually, Maybe not. Maybe they don't want to talk about it. Yeah, that that could be too. Okay, and then you know what? Here's my last one, and then we can go into the. I know you're going to do the politics. Do you remember that TV show called Sons of Guns? Yeah, yeah, I remember it. If people that are down there, you know, or people that are listening to the podcast and are like, "Man, which one is that?" It's it, you know, there's a fair amount of these. There have been over the years a fair amount of these, um, um, a fair amount of these, uh, you know, these like you know, gun TV shows. Yeah, you're trying like which which one is which? This is the one that basically the guy had his 17 year old daughter basically walking around half naked all the time. Um, <laughs> so, um. He, uh, he's, uh, what is he, what is he, what is he, what is he, his, um, he was convict, he was, you know, cause he was brought, he's been having issues. We've talked about it, right? Um, oh, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, he's had he's... issues with his license. He's had issues with his, um, uh, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, like being audited and for, you know, and there's been issues with his books and finding stuff. So he lost his FFL. So anyway, the wheat okay, federal jury has convicted a Wheat Ridge gun dealer who who be, and this just happened in February, who became a Discovery Channel reality TV star in ten felony counts related to conspiracy, fraud, and tax evasion. Now here's here's what was interesting. He was he was the the jury hung on three charges of illegal importing of weapons. You know, he failed to report a million dollars income, IRS, blah blah blah, dealing without a license. ATF yeah. agent seized 583 guns and ammunition from his gun smoke store in 2015. We all kind of heard that. He had entered into an agreement with the ATF to relinquish his FFL license in 2009. So this was years before his fucking TV show. Yeah. And so he goes and he basically has a gun store and he goes and creates a TV show and is basically rubbing in everybody's face. Well, here's what he did and it was just like it was like you got to be out of your mind i've never heard this they said what he was doing is he had worked out a deal with l- other local ffl shops and the, he was basically using a uh, a gun store in castle rock to operate gun smoke under a straw license now I've heard of a straw purchase and I've heard of straw, you know, straw buyers in gun stores. I've never heard of a gun store using a straw license before. Neither have I. But uh, I think you're mixing your pleasures here. The gun smoke store, I don't believe, is the Sons of Guns place. I think that was a, a different gun store. I'm sorry. You know what? American Guns. Sons of Guns is which yeah, one? Yeah, well, you that's know what? The, the one, one with the half naked daughter the- and yeah. Oh wait a minute! You know what? That's true. I gotta gotta be careful when I start talking about daughters because you that that doesn't necessarily narrow it down. The one that basically he had her walking around, kind of in cutie little shorty shorts all the time, which yeah, was yeah, fine. Yeah, they, but yeah, it was yeah, obvious you, what they were doing. So yeah, I'm sorry, it's American guns. Exactly. Yeah, you were mixing so, your pleasures there. I'm mixing my pleasures. Well, now, don't get me wrong. The guy that ran uh, uh, Sons of Guns, he's a freaking mess too. <laughs> They're yeah, both a mess. Yeah, we've had the. We can't go into it. We've had that girl reach out to us. So I mean, you know, oh yeah, we, she seems yeah. nice. So we yeah, like her. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, big fan. Um, all right. Okay, well, all hold right. on before yeah. before we get into the nasty stuff. Let me throw you one more. <laughs> okay, I just I read this blurb. This has nothing to do with guns, but it does have to. It does lead into the political stuff. You know, I mean. All this, this, this crazy politically cracked, uh, transgender, you know, I can, I can, I can self identify, identify myself as a toaster if I want to and all this crazy crap. Well, Cass Clemmer is an author of a children's coloring book called The Adventures of Tony the Tampon. <laughs> okay. Now look, you can't make this shit up. Well, actually, Cass can. Okay, 
her whole her whole object behind this coloring book is to desensitize, I guess, menstruation or whatever. However, she wants to degender the female biological process and persuade children that men can get periods too. Now, but you know, if you're a Republican, you're against science. And you think the Earth is flat and dinosaurs roamed the Earth 6,000 years ago. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, I mean, just seriously. Well, here's the real question. Who's paying for this fucking book? Yeah. Because there's no way the mar- did this come through like the National Endowment of the Arts or this come through like some health government health service program because there's the the market didn't didn't pay to make this book because it, it wouldn't pay for itself somebody yeah, somebody I, stroked them a check and i guarantee is probably the the vote the, the taxpayer yeah probably <laughs> probably i don't know i i didn't look into it deep enough but it's like really i mean i mean to actually sit there in in you know look you know, I get it. You're a guy. You want to you want to gender identify as a girl. You're a girl. You want to gender identify as a guy. That's fine. Whatever. I don't care. You know, it, whatever. I, it's I don't care one way or the other. Um, yeah, how, the long in, of, how long until people are in California and they're basically like, I identify as being a law enforcement officer, so I'm going to carry a gun. Well, you don't have a license. You can't do that. I identify as being a, a law enforcement officer. Yeah. I mean, this never stops. Yeah, I know. Um, well, anyway, apparently this, this person has a, this political campaign going where she's trying to push judges to permit men to change their legal, their legal sex by simply de- declaring they have female gender identity. So what, what they're saying is, um, in order to let men use women's shower rooms, women's shelters, uh, join women's athletic teams, basically, they want to, you know, legally change their gender without actually having to physically change their gender. Okay, you know what? I, mean, I, yeah, uh, I, I don't look. I would guess that there's pro- this is probably not a completely new argument, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Uh, People don't realize. Okay, here's here's a, here's a here's a here's a newsflash. Your your birth certificate, your certificate of live birth, is very similar to the Constitution. Now, people don't understand this. Okay, you will notice. You know, in the Constitution, they don't ever actually subtract anything from it. They just add to it. So, like, there's something in the Constitution. They pass an amendment. They pass an amendment saying, you know, we're going to have prohibition. Sure, 18th Amendment, prohibition, 21st and Amendment, repealing the 21st uh, the Amendment. Or there you go. I didn't know. I didn't know what number it was. So, um, you know, so they pass another amendment to counteract the First Amendment. Yes, exactly. Your certificate of live birth. These people that want to basically change their gender, they, you know, if they want to go through the process or do what they have to do, that is fine. But they will never, ever, ever be able to keep that information from being discoverable because when you change this stuff for your your birth certificate or your whatever you can't change a birth certificate you can add to it you can you know put amendments on it but you can't go back and erase shit off of it you can you can add stuff to correct it you know what I mean but some of these people you can just tell they're not even really familiar with how the processes of like these legal documents work and how this really works in the real world, you know, and they want to do this kind of like, you know, like if you're a born again Christian, if you just say like these seven, eight, nine, ten words, you're now uh, you're considered saved. If you're a Mus- Muslim and you just say whatever the little quick ass prayer is, suddenly now you're considered a Muslim. You know what I mean? It, th- that that may be true in your in your religious belief, but that is not how any of this works legally with documentation in the in the secular Western world. So, well, I mean, you know, whatever. well, but but in all fairness, Cass Clemmer doesn't probably understand that because uh, Cass Clemmer is from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So it gets even better. 
Really? That's yeah. I don't know if Cass Clemmer is a current citizen or a resident alien or what, but apparently uh, this person is from the Congo originally. Yeah, you know, I mean, you get your arm cut off in the Congo. Can you just identify as being someone who has two arms? And you know, sure if, you, you if you're, if you know, a lot of people may not get that joke. But there's a few people that do. Yeah. Um, so. Well, Dude, um, okay, what the hell's going on with goddamn John McCain and Rand Paul? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Basically, John, John McCain needs to go away. I, Ugh. I, it's, it's, you know, again, you know how I said, like, I admit when I'm wrong. I, I like the document, you know, whatever, because I don't ever want people to hang shit over my head. Look, I did not think Donald Trump was going to win. Not because I was against Donald Trump. I just like, you know, when they're like, well, he has to win Pennsylvania. I was like, I just checked the fuck out. I'm like, dude, get the fuck out of here. Donald Trump's not going to, no goddamn Republican carries Pennsylvania. Well, here's the thing. When Rand Paul was first running for president or running for Senate, I was like, oh, fuck. I didn't really know that much about him. I just knew he was Ron Paul's son. And you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a libertarian who hates Ron Paul. And right now, just about ten percent of our listeners just hung up on us. Which yeah, is well, I'm I'm not a libertarian in any way, shape, or form, and I've always been a fan of Rand Paul. If you remember, that is true. I here's the thing, but Rand Paul, Rand Paul, not Ron. I think Ron Paul is fucking crazy, now, and Ron I can Paul I can prove crazy. it. I can prove it in an argument too. But Rand Paul has really, really, really impressed the shit out of me. He has turned into someone where I've been like. Damn, I could follow this guy to the fucking ends of the earth. And, you know, and so now John McCain is basically got on the Senate floor, and I don't even know what the hell it was they were arguing over. Rand Paul basically comes in. You know, any senator can do something to stop whatever process they were trying to do. He comes in. He's like, nope, do whatever. And he, he walked out. And basically McCain gets up there and says, you're an agent of Russia. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like, go away, you old fuck. <laughs> Oh, you know yeah. what it was? I think it was they were passing a resolution to make you, you know, they were quote passing a resolution to to basically say we think that Ukraine should be part of NATO. Now again, it's not up to the Senate, but the argument that Rand Paul wants to make, <coughs> look, if you're yeah. familiar with NATO or or excuse me, military science or or even the, the logistics of how NATO really works right now, look, okay, we can. NATO, okay, which is basically 90% us, okay, 75, 80% us, realistically 85% us. Yeah. Okay. NATO can barely, I mean, I mean fucking barely defend Poland in a actual major war. We cannot functionally defend the Baltics. Ukraine is so far ass beyond goddamn Poland. That is, it, I mean, again, we can't hardly defend fucking Poland at this point. We're trying, you know. So basically, guys like John McCain, who it, it's it's the political equivalent of pre-existing conditions. Okay, Ukraine is not part of NATO. We do not have an obligation, you know, to for NATO to go in there and deal with that. So now Russia is basically fucking with NATO. John McCain wants to basically create this political argument. That almost directly puts us into, you know, gets us that much closer to a military confrontation with Russia. And all of a sudden, you know, Rand Paul with some sane, you know, logic comes in and goes, no, we're not doing this. We're not passing this bullshit resolution. Again, it's, it's, it's a resolution. It's not even binding, but it's just the principle of it. John McCain is, is, I don't know what's wrong with that old fucker. I mean, uh, he's, he's he, fucking crazy. He is. He yeah. he just like I said. He just needs to go. You know, it's away. like look. Do look. Do I agree with Russia taking over Ukraine? No. Do I think we should fight to try to you know maybe you know arm people and do shit and do whatever? Yes. I, I you know that's an argument and a fight that we can have. But there's ways to do it. But let's be real. And this has always been true throughout the entire Cold War. Okay. And even post the Cold War. Kiev or Kiev in the Ukraine has always been a KGB town. They border that fucking country. That is their, I mean, that's, I mean, us, us pretending that we can, that we're able to like all of a sudden, you know, try to make Ukraine a NATO country 
that we can't even you know support would be the equivalent of Russia coming out saying that oh yeah they're going to defend Tijuana from the, from American aggression. It's like really no you're not. I mean you know what are you going to you know is is Russia okay if we decide to bump across the border and just grab Tijuana and and Russia decides well oh, they're, they're our ally we're gonna we're gonna defend them. Is Russia going to trade nuclear weapons? Is Russia or is Russia going to lose Moscow to save Tijuana? No, they're not. It's bullshit, and it's the same goddamn thing. And this is where John McCain is just really out of his fucking element here. He's yeah. fucking crazy, and everybody that actually knows how any of this stuff works knows he's fucking crazy. But nobody calls him out on it except for Rand Paul. And I'm like, yeah. I've done a complete 180 on Rand Paul. <laughs> I love that fucking guy. Yeah, I, I've been a big fan since day one. Yeah, I wasn't, but I admit it. Yeah, because I yeah. thought he was his father. Yeah, well, you know, and you know, my my, I've gone, I've said this, pup. My my guess, my biggest complaint with, well, my biggest complaint with Ron Paul, his father, is one, he's fucking anti-Semitic. He's racist as shit. Okay, he is. You know, yeah. all you guys out there that, you know, love Ron Paul, he's racist as fuck. I was around in the 70s. He's he's racist as fuck. But I remember when he got up when during the presidential primaries for the Republican nomination some years ago. And it was, you know, like 12 people up there. And they asked him about, you know, nuclear proliferation and the Middle East peace process and Israel versus Iran. And he basically got up there and he said, why are we in this? Why are we dealing with this? You know, Israel has nuclear weapons. Iran wants nuclear we- weapons. Let them figure this out. And, you know, nobody called him out on his bullshit because he's fucking Ron Paul and he's no one takes him seriously. But if a major candidate said that, here's what he basically said. A, 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 a candidate for the Republican Party basically came up and said he has no problem if 70 or 80 million people in is you know, the total population of Israel and Iran nuke each other. Yeah, let yeah. them nuke each other. Who gives a fuck? You know, forget <laughs> this. Forget the social implications of that for all these hippies. Forget the economic implications of that for all these fucking, you know, these supposed economists people that care about how money's spent. Forget all the ecological implications. Can you imagine ecologically people freaked out over Fukushima and a little bit of radiation showing up on the West Coast? These assholes nuke the fuck out of each other. <laughs> I mean, I mean, just, yeah. you know, and again, this is an example where Ron Paul gets to say shit and nobody calls him out on it because he gets a pass. And so then all the kids that want to smoke dope be like, I love Ron Paul. It's like, dude, well, he, he, fucker. I hate I he, hate fucking Ron Paul. Look, he gets a pass because he never votes on anything. Um, he he spouts off his crazy bullshit. No one takes him serious. I mean. And it's like, okay, he's not even worth messing with. He is, he is proverbial, he is the proverbial gnat that's flying around your head and bothers you. Now that may piss off a lot of these Ron Paul libertarians, but it's the truth. The guy's an ass clown and a joke. He is. He, I mean, al- he, he, he always he, has been. You know, he's the reason why the libertarian party never actually goes anywhere. That's why he's the reason why the Tea Party took over. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, Ron Paul brings a lot of baggage to the goddamn table. And, you know, again, so, you know, when I found out Rand Paul was running for Senate in Kentucky, I was like, oh, God. Oh, yeah. fuck me running. And, you know, yeah. I found out, you know what? Hey, I like this guy. I, I, I Rand Paul, man, I mean, he is, you know, he's a real constitutionalist. And while, you know, while I may not necessarily – his goal and my goals may not always match up. We do start from the same place. If we're going to do something, we got to do it legally. If we're going to do something, we have to do it constitutionally. Not this just made up bullshit that people, you know, Republicans are in power, so we're just going to make up this this right and do it. Democrats are in power, we're just going to make up this right and do it. You know, it's 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 funny, you know, how you know Republicans bitch about Barack Obama. But you know when the Republicans have the, have say, they do the same thing fucking Obama does, and Ron, and Rand Paul calls him out on it. I like him for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
yeah, it's uh, it's actually kind of a breath of fresh air. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's basically it's the reestablishment of Congress as the actual oversight in, in the in the three quote equal branches of government. Because what's happened is historically the executive branch has gained too much power. The legislative branch has actually abdicated abdicated their power. They didn't lose it; they give it away. And then the judiciary sits around and goes, "Eh, whatever, bucket, we don't care." You know. Rand Paul's the, one of the sanest people in Washington. Yeah. Of course, you know tomorrow, turn out he'll fucking you know do <laughs> something stupid. You know, God, he'll 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 he'll, you know, he'll he'll start he'll he'll start blaming shit on the world Jewish conspiracy, and I'll be like, you fuck. So I look like an <laughs> asshole. So uh, well, hey, what's know. going on with the Ross rifle? I got to get off I, these politics. Shit just pisses me off. Are you done with the Ross rifle? Uh, oh no, no, no. Uh, I've been <laughs> I've been tied up with a bunch of other crap, and I uh, know the I'm, only reason I even know is I, I noticed there was a hole in one of the gun racks. I'm like, what's supposed to be there? I'm like, oh fuck, that's a goddamn Ross rifle. Yeah, no, I've got it disassembled, but I haven't made any stock repairs or anything at all. It's in really, really. I mean, the stock sucks. Um, and when I say the stock sucks, uh, I found three three cracks in the stock um but everything else is in really good shape i mean the the, surprisingly enough it's it's pretty nice the um one of the cracks in the stock is is kind of kind of an important you know it's a was it it's, like it's, near there at this receiver? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's where it's it's. Well, if you're familiar with Ross rifle, it, Ross rifles, it's a weird design, but it's between the on the bottom side of the stock, between in front of the trigger guard where the trigger guard uh, is inlaid, and then it goes to that uh, the the I don't even know what it's called that funky lever on the. Oh, the, the 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 follower. It's like the fo- yeah, yeah. It's like that little yeah. It's, there's it's a there's weird. a weird lever on this model of Ross where basically you can push this lever button and it drops the follower in the mag, and so you can literally just kind of like drop rounds into the magazine as opposed to having to thumb them in individually under spring pressure. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's that crack is kind of crucial. I got to spend a little time on that. The other ones are there, but they're not really crucial. I mean, I will repair them and uh, and stabilize them so they don't crack any further. Are you going to use a uh, glue epoxy? Or are you going to like tack it or something? I don't know how uh, that works. No, I. You know, <clears throat> um, honestly, I think I can. Um, I've got some uh, pretty decent epoxy that I can use. Um, the the problem now I, I won't need to pin or tack or do anything like that. I mean I can I it they should be fairly simple repairs. Um I need to get into it and 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 just play with it, you know. Okay. Um there are, and the nice thing is they're they're not they're not big splintery cracks or anything. They're pretty hairline. So the only trouble I may have is being able to get enough spread on it to an in, a, inject a resin in there to uh, stabilize it. We'll see. Okay. <clears throat> we'll see. Like I said, I just got to I just got to jump into it, and I haven't 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 really had a lot of time to work on it. And then when I have had time, it was just like. You know, I got other. I've got like three gun projects on the table. Do right you now. still have the the uh, the Yugo German Mauser checked out of the armory? Yeah, it's it's checked out. It's but it's done. It's it's ready to check back in. It's just a matter of either next time you're over here, or next time I'm over there. Okay, because um, I just I it, forgot about it. Yeah, no, it's it's done. It's ready to go. The only um, I got the barrel looking pretty damn good. Uh, what we what I need to do, or you, whoever, we need to run about um, four or five rounds down the barrel, and then give it a good scrubbing. That should really touch it off. Cool. I've got um, I've got a, a nice little pile of brand new manufacturer uh, PPU eight millimeter Mauser ammo over here. There you go. Run run Clean. some. Run run a couple rounds through it and uh, give the barrel a good scrubbing and it should be top notch. Barrel's in pretty good shape, 
it's it's dark, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, corrosive ammo and all that, sh- you know, yeah. stuff. For that's years. why I have the that's why I have the PPU because it's just easier to deal with. I don't, I, you know, corrosive stuff. I, I try to avoid it if I can. It depends on what the gun is. I mean, if it's like you know, I'm not going to run corrosive ammo through like some like a Beretta AR70 or something. I'm just not because you know, to go in and get all that shit out of it is just kind of sure. a pain in the dick. Yeah. Hey, the Spaz 12 is done. Yeah, in theory, <laughs> in theory, yeah, yeah, we'll hasn't see. been shot, but apparently, uh, the it's all in in theory, it should be safe to shoot. It's even got a sling on it. Good. That's um, the, oh man, that Spaz Twelve sling is a piece of shit. I mean, it look, I mean, it's well eh. made sling, but the way it's designed and it's reproduced accurately, eh, who cares? Those, those connectors, man, they're a piece of shit. So I mean, basic, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah, who cares? I mean, you know, it is it is what it is. I mean, if this was your go to shotgun, you'd be doing something different. But for, but you know, oh, for God, all intents yeah, per not... for all intents purposes, it's fine. Oh, you know? the uh, did I tell you that the guy from the Spas Twelve Project would like to get together and shoot video? Did I tell you no, that? No, you didn't. Yeah, the guy who um, we got the buffer from, he had uh, reached out and because um, he he sees that you know we're basically doing full-blown video stuff now and uh he you know he's a i guess spas is it's franky it's italian it's not french it's apparently it's italian franky shotguns he's this big collector of these guns and there's a there's a fair amount of them like there's one that looks like an ar-15 but it's a it's a shotgun and um i guess it's pretty uncommon I, I've seen it. Yeah, he would like to. Um, he would like to maybe get together and shoot a bunch of videos because I think he likes what we're doing. So I, I said, you know, maybe. I, I mean, you know, I think it's possible. Things get a little bit warmer because sure. he's not going to be. You know, where we shoot and it's cold, he's not going to be comfortable. Where um, Where is he located? He is in. Cent. I would say Central East Indiana, maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe, 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 maybe. Not quite northeast. I would say he's uh, he's above the halfway mark. He's somewhere oh, so kind of up well, right there. Well, he's used to cold then. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. So he, um, you know, I mean, I was like, okay, yeah, maybe do something, or you know, hell, maybe bring him down to Mitchell's Range or something. Yeah, that could be interesting too. So yeah, yeah, it could be. Oh, did you hear Remington laid off a bunch of people? I did. Did you hear Colt laid off a bunch of people? I did. Oh well. Um. Yeah, shit happens. I mean, they're just not well-run companies. I mean, look, dude, would you buy a Remington? I mean, like a new. Uh, you know what? Yeah, you, you know what? Yes, I would. Because I'll tell you what that that uh, new production uh, that R nineteen eleven they have is not a bad platform. You you know what? I hadn't thought about that. I don't know if that gun. Yeah, I mean, would you know, I, well, here's would, the thing. It's would, also it's a 1911, I, and to you, a 1911 is like a Model yeah. T. You can get in there, basically rebuild the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Now, would I would I buy a uh, you know a 700 or a, uh, no? Yeah, no, I no, I, dude, I would no, never no. touch a Remington 700. No, um, you know, like all those guys on the SWAT team, but the bolt guns, a lot of them use those, and it's just like I don't say anything, but I'm like, yeah, I don't fucking like those guns. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, hey, whatever. I'm, you know, no. Uh, w- would I buy a Remington? It, you know, it just depends on what it is, you know. Um, look, but Remington's part of the Freedom Group, and look, not that I dislike the Freedom Group. Don't get me wrong, <sighs> but there's a lot of problems inside the Freedom Group. You know, like, 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 well, like okay. what, what? I mean, I don't, well, I don't know. Well, what is like, it? like, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, because this is one parent corporation and they gobbled up what twenty companies, something like that. Okay, look at Marlin. Every, every, you know, Freedom Group bought Marlin. Marlin was a damn fine rifle. Now, now everyone oh, man, wants the Marlins are a wreck. Yeah, exactly. Now they've kind of got a lot of the bugs worked out of them, but you maybe, know, maybe. Yeah, you know, there's a few of those gun riders that basically suck Marlin's dick, and they do like, oh no, they're all good now. Buy one, and you know, it's like I would not stake my personal rep on what you tell me. 
Yeah, um, you know, um, you know, they bought Tapco. See how well that worked out for Tapco. Uh, would you buy Dakota Arms? No, no, you wouldn't. Um, you know, the only the only thing that I haven't heard a whole lot of issues with uh, with the Freedom Group are the H and R's. But you know how, how far is that to make? I, well, and how how bad can you fuck up a break da- a single shot break? You know, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is what it is. But look, dude, you can't find one of those H and R's in forty five seventy right now. Yeah, yeah. since Ohio went to forty five seventy. Yeah, yeah. But you know, but like fr- the Freedom Group has Bushmaster and uh, uh, DPMS. Um, and you know, oh, do it, they? I, did, I've, I don't. I can never remember. You know, and the thing is, um, I, you know, I mean, you can you can talk trash about them all you want, but I'd take Bushmaster or a, a, a Panther Arms AR and run them. But see, but here's the thing with the AR: the AR is like the 1911. You know, I mean, if you buy one and you have a problem with something, there's so many parts out there you can upgrade, you know, you can just, and, and you can self maintenance it. You're, you know, you can just, you know, oh, I don't you, like it. Yeah, you know what? Crappy, it just drop a new part in. You, you know? bring up a really good point that I'm going to come at from a different direction that I think is a big problem in our community. And what you get is you have, I call it analysis paralysis. You get these kids and they want to buy an AR. And they'll, you know, they email us, they email, they get on these gun forums, they talk to other buddies, and they, cause they all want to know, is this one okay? Is this one okay? Is this one okay? Cause they don't want to buy a bad gun. And they end up getting all wrapped around the axle, you know, getting more and more and more expensive. And there's nothing wrong with that, maybe for quality. Um, buying an AR, then they end up putting all this money in an AR, they can't afford to shoot it, they really don't feed it, they have it, they're like, oh yeah, this is badass, this is awesome, you know, I love these guys, they buy these guns, they spend a couple grand on them, and then they're like, oh yeah, mine runs great, it's like, how many rounds do you have fucking through it? Uh, I've got like 500 rounds in three years. It's like, really, dude? You know, how do you even know it runs great? And how do you even know it runs great? But the thing is, my argument to these kids would be, you know what? Go take 700 bucks or 800 bucks. Go buy a Smith and Wesson. Buy a Bushmaster. Bu- I don't care. Buy one of these rifles. You know, everyone that like shits on these guns and says they're terrible, that's fine. Go shoot them. Learn something. When something breaks on it, go fix it. It's not that hard. I mean, I mean, you know, take it to your gunsmith. Oh, I broke. I my my you know my uh my uh my gas keys freaking back. To- okay, go get a fix. My you know. You mm-hmm. know, this, 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 that. I mean, these people, you know, at the end of the day, yeah. they're not even shooting these guns. They're not learning anything. They're not getting any better. You're better off buying a cheap ass AR and running it till it breaks. I, if more people would break guns, they would actually learn something yeah. and be better well, shooters. Look, I've had this argument for years with guys on the internet. You never know, when trash talks like the Taurus 1911. I told him, I said, I'll tell you what. Other other than the uh, the billboard roll mark on the slide, I said I'll take I'll take a five hundred dollar Taurus nineteen eleven, and I'll run that up next. I'll, I'll run that with your Ed Browns, your Bill Wilsons. I'll run it next to your Kimber, your Cole. You you, you bring your baddest hot shit nineteen eleven to the table, and I'll run a Taurus side by side, and 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 it'll run with you. Now the first thing I'm going to do is gut it. Yeah, you know, but I tell you what, as far as barrel slide and frame grips, trigger hammer, you, you know I'll what? Keep yeah, all you, those parts. You used to see that all the time. People would buy Kimbers, and they would be like, you know, oh, it's going to be a project gun. You know, again, you're kind of better off with like maybe a Springfield or a Colt just from the name retaining value. But besides that, you know, it's like, well, you know, Kimber doesn't have the greatest reputation. You know, it kind of goes up and down as far as 1911 is concerned. But you know, these people, they would, they would. You know, send their Kimber off to some guy to do a bunch of custom work, and they would want to buy a cart or a storm or you know, you know, I don't know, whatever X Y Z barrel to put in this 1911. And if that gunsmith, even if he's a high end custom gunsmith, that he was being honest, he would tell these kids, "Dude, that Kimber barrel is the shit. That you're not going to buy a better barrel than a Kimber barrel. And don't put the money it. into that. Kimber barrels are fantastic barrels." Um, what the truth is, most barrels are good. It's, you know what, it, compared to like the 80s when you were buying GI barrels and just swap them out again. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But you know, it's it, like, I tell you what, in, 
in the 80s, this is in, you know, this is when all these, you know, competition guys were buying the Argentine Colts, you know, the 1927 Argentine model. And they were, you know, because there weren't any real competition guns until Pacmar and Wilson started, you know, you know, building them up. Um, you know, uh, they would buy these uh, surplus Argentine Colts for 50 bucks and then they would build them. You know, and back then you didn't have, you know, uh, all these people. Ma- you had some people making parts, but a lot of them you modified yourself, you know, and, and tricked them out yourself. And, you know, like uh, I'd go to the uh, the OVMS military show and I'd buy GI barrels wrapped in brown paper and Cosmoline for five bucks a piece. And I'd buy, you know, I'd buy 10 of them at a time. You know, I'd run a thousand rounds through my gun, my Colt, and change out the barrel. Barrel was still good, but you know, you want the freshest barrel you can. I mean, it was a GI barrel, you know, so it wasn't anything special. Well, that's kind of how Ed Brown got to start. He was really just making parts because mm-hmm. he was, you know, getting GI parts and he was either well, fluffing and buffing them, or then he started yeah. basically, you know, making that, his own that, parts. That's how they all started. Pacmar, Wilson, they all started making parts and then they started making like guns for their other shooting buddies, you know, doing, you know, doing a whole gun up and then, you know, they, yeah, well, but over, they are but where o- they are but today. But overlaid, but bringing it back to today, overlaid to today's market. I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot of well-made guns. It's hard to, you know, look, the lever guns with Marlin is a tough situation because there's a lot of moving parts in a, in a lever gun and you got to know what you're doing. You just can't slap those together and that's where Marlin having a problem but the other side of the argument that i will never understand i see this ruger has come out with that rpr rifle it's basically it's their race ready ruger is what i think it stands for and um you know i mean it's a way for you to get a get a quote tactical gun and a chassis system and you can show up and you can be competitive and you know what in your local matches if you're good enough you can even win with them you know but then you see these kids they will buy these rprs and again you, you'll see it on the internet. They're ripping out the barrels. They're changing the, the chassis system. They're doing this. And they're putting all these money into these RPR rifles. And I'm just like, what the Why? fuck are you guys doing? And you know what? You even see some of the higher end guys that run social media properties. They'll be doing videos like, oh yeah, they'll pu- they'll buy an RPR. They'll pull out the barrel and they'll spin some like you know Douglas or higher end barrel. And it's like. Why? What the fuck are you do? What you know? It is the well, thing you get they, all these they, because they, kids want to spend money on their gun because it's easy instead of going out and shooting it because you can look like an idiot. Well, the the the, the internet guys that are doing videos, you know why they're doing it? They're doing it for the audience. Yeah, but, you know, you, know are you, are you ever Ruger yeah. RPR and you haven't shot that barrel out that you want to put a new barrel in it, you'd be punched in the mouth. I mean, seriously, it's like, what are you doing? Well, You're just look, buying shit to buy shit at this point. Well, the, um, yeah, I mean, I agree. But, you know, but like if you, if they make the, uh, you know, like, okay, <clears throat> you get it in 6.5 Creedmoor. Okay. You're going to be replacing that barrel. I, if yes. you shoot the gun. Nah, 6.5 Creedmoor is not a big barrel burner. Not like yeah. 243. No, no. 6.5 yeah. Creedmoor is not a big barrel burner. Yeah, you're going to, if you shoot that gun, you'll replace that barrel. Well, yeah, eventually. Dude, 6.5 Creedmoor is not a big ass barrel burner. Not like these, uh, 6x47s or these, no, uh, uh-uh. 6.5, that's one of the reasons why Creedmoor is kind of popular. Because it doesn't, it, I mean, you don't smoke out a barrel in like five or 800 rounds. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I mean that's why um that's why Ruger because you know I was in was it Wyoming, I saw a Ruger RPR in two forty three on the shelf and it was used in a gun store. I think it was Montana. Montana. I was in Montana, and I saw this gun. I was like, God damn. It's a good price. I like the caliber, and I was like, man, this would be perfect for freeze. And I literally, I went back to the ranch. I, I do like two forty three. Mm-hmm. I went back I to the ranch, and a couple, and I was like, hey, you know what? A day or two later, I went back in there, and I just wanted to look at it again. And I may even sent you a picture on because I was kind of maybe talking myself into buying it, and it was gone. And then a few months later, Ruger announces that they're getting up to two forty three, and it's like, yeah. you know. 
I like the 243. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm a big fan of the 243. Mm-hmm. But 243 I mean, is yeah. also a little bit of a barrel burner, too. Um, Compared to, comp- like, com- to 6.5, com- yeah. Oh, com- yeah. Comp- Competition-wise, yeah. Hunting, not so much. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. so, I mean, you know. Like, here's you know, the thing. I like, mean, it, it just depends on what you're using it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we haven't really discussed this publicly, but, you know, I have a ri- I have a rifle that I've got configured out with a match heavyweight fluted barrel on it, which doesn't really need, but it's what I got. I got a deal on it, and it's in 243, and we're not hand-loading it, or we're not buying match ammo, we're not doing anything fancy. We're running PPU 243, like, hunting ammo through it, like, you know, just cheap... Hey, I'll tell you, and I'll tell you I'll what, you. this thing shoots lights out. And I'm like, when we I, when we reveal this set up, people are going to be like, damn, really? Well, I'll tell you what. 600 uh, yards I, and in? Come on. A, lo- a lot of guys get wrapped up with the hand loads and the match ammo. But I'll tell you what, if you're on a budget, you know, or you don't, you, you know, when I say you're on a budget, you can't really afford to buy, you know, uh, high dollar match ammo, or you can't, you can't really afford or don't have the time or the know-how to get into reloading, PPU ammo is damn, damn good ammo at a reasonable price. And that's the thing. You know, this gun is a, you know, you know, in full disclosure, it's a pretty high-end gun. It's a pretty expensive setup, but it's in 243, and it's not even like the optimal, quote, twist rate of you were going to run it as like a competition 243, as a competition, quote, 6 millimeter. But in PPU ammo, which I can get all day from AIM, and it's not match ammo, man, it's but, it, but I tell out. you what, I'm PPU- not. I, I have no interest in in, in hand loading for that for that barrel at all. I'm, I'm going to buy all PPU ammo and just run it the entire life of that barrel. We'll have PPU ammo run through it. But I tell you what, PPU ammo, even though it's not match ammo, is a, probably about the closest commercial ammo you're going to find to match ammo. PPU now, makes match ammo. I've got some they, No, they do make match ammo. I'm talking about regular, standard, blue box PPU. They're, uh, uh, I think it's all blue, but yeah. yeah. No, I think, the, I think they're match ammos in like a gray or a silver box, but yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. But... um. But yeah, I mean they do, um, and maybe it's a blue box. I don't know. <laughs> what 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 do I know? But but look, they do make match ammo. But the regular non-match, just the regular, you pick up a box of of three hundred eight Winchester. <sighs> I tell you what, you're going to be hard pressed to find um, commercial ammo. That close to match ammo. PPU makes damn good ammo. They yeah, they have a good reputation. And you know, again, I can't speak for every caliber and every everything in their line and all the different variations. All I can say is, well, this PPU ammo two forty three. It's I think it's got like a soft lead tip on it or something. It's not even like not, I mean, it's not even it's like a what you ammo. Yeah, it, yeah, it seems like a hunting ammo. And I'm telling you what, this thing shoots. Well, freaking gangbusters in this, here, this freaking rifle. Here's what I like about PPU ammo, and I'm and I and I need. I'm going to buy some. <clears throat> um, or I'll have you pick some up, whatever. Next time you're making an ammo buy, but um, I'm, I need to buy it for the Russian snipers because PPU makes a seven six two by fifty four rimmed match ammo. Yeah, well. We'll, we'll pick up the sniper Russian yeah. sniper project later this summer. Yeah, that'll be later on this summer. But but here's here's the thing with that is I mean I God I don't know we've got we've got a ton of seven six two by fifty four ammo. I mean we got a ton of it out there. I mean you know yeah. But uh, I want to do a uh, a comparison because uh, I picked up prior to hunting season i picked i think i only got like 100 rounds of it but i picked up a 100 rounds of 76254 and actually i believe you have it um of uh, soft tip hunting ammo i be, i don't know where it's at but i do believe i i do believe it's in the armory somewhere um, i remember that but what i want to do is i want to shoot the surplus and i have several different varieties of surplus ammo i want to shoot some surplus ammo shoot the hunting ammo shoot the match ammo and you know and i'm not talking you know maybe do it at 100 yards or something like that you know just uh just to look at the comparison you know 
Yeah. Nice. You know what you should do? You should just rip the barrel off one of those things and just put a, uh, spend a lot of money on a high dollar barrel and just, you know, just redo it because you can. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. kidding. You know, it's yeah, like the RPR. Yeah. It's like, what are you guys sure. doing, dude? I mean, yeah. I don't, well, I don't, you I don't know, get you know, that. You know at what? All. Hell, let's just rechamber the Russian sniper in 243. Be done with it. Dude, I got to be honest with you. That would be freaking awesome. <laughs> 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 that uh, would be what was it oh man didn't well, we you know what there 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 there's thousands of milsurp collectors out there cringing right now was it flow from uh uh that show back in the 70s kiss my grits yeah. um dude wasn't there a it was a, a gun store outside of dc in virginia we discussed this somebody had a k31 one of those two swiss straight poles <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. and since they couldn't get ammo for it back in this is before you could get PPU and PPUs making stuff, and then like the GP11 comes into the country now. Like for a long time, you couldn't get ammo for you know couldn't get uh, seven five Swiss K11 or GP11 ammo. Oh, so no, this no, this that person was hard ammo to find. Yeah, this person had it rebarreled in three oh eight, and I dude don't tell me that wasn't like damn that well I went I went looking for that gun I couldn't oh, find dude. it. Dude, I'd love to have a a, a K31 in. Uh, in 308. Uh, that dude, would just be... Didn't, didn't we find a Jap... One of those Jap... Jap rifles had been... Re, it was, you know, instead of it being in, like... I... It was... It was... I, it was re... It was rebarreled in, like, 6.5 Swede. Yeah. We saw one rebarreled in 6.5 Swede, which I thought was rather odd. Um, I've seen a ton of Jap rifles rechambered in 30 odd six. I mean, that was real common in the 50s and 60s. Because Wasn't there a 6.5 millimeter Jap caliber? A 6 or 6.5? There's a 6.5 yeah, like yeah, there, right? yeah, there, there is. And, that, and that, that's probably why they went 6.5 Swede, because they didn't have to uh, rebarrel. Oh, you think it was just hogged out? Mm hmm. You didn't have to change the case head. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, it was uh, it was an easy easy caliber switch, but you know, but the thing is, back in the 50s and 60s, you know, you couldn't get Jap ammo. Just wasn't it wasn't around. It, you just couldn't get it. it. wasn't available. But all these GIs brought these Jap rifles back, and I mean, a lot of the younger guys might have heard stories about this, um, but don't uh, don't know it. But um, you used to be able to go in front of any hardware store and they'd have a, a, a big barrel and they'd have military rifles in there, whether it be whether it be Enfields or Italian Carcanos or Jap rifles or whatever. They, and you could buy them for they were, they literally. Were, they were typically like cardboard barrels, right? Yeah, like they car you, I remember those. Yeah, and you could literally buy them for five, ten bucks. They would even be in front of the counter. They wouldn't even be behind the counter. You'd just be like, yeah, know. yeah. You just go dig through the barrel. Um, dude, I remember. Yeah. I used as a kid used to buy ammo at a hardware store. Yeah, but anyway, so you, all these guys had these um, had these rifles that were useless. So what they would do is they'd go to their local gunsmith, and gunsmith would take it out and rechambered in 30 odd six because hey surprise 30 odd six was plentiful in this country especially since it was our you know military uh round for years yeah and um you know uh either cut down the jap stock or or put a put a sporter stock on it and they'd decorate it up and next thing you know you got yourself a 30 odd six hunting rifle on the cheap and hey you know back in the 50s and 60s gunsmiths didn't charge a whole hell of a lot for their work yeah, I mean, yeah. So, you know what? We're gonna wrap it up on that note. That's a positive note. I'm. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to end this on politics because there's so much crap stuff going on. I just don't. I like that. We're gonna. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jap thirty odd six Jap rifles. God bless America. <laughs> we win. You lose. Fuck you. I'm take. I'm turning your. Uh, I'm. I'm turning your emperor's gun into a deer rifle. There you go. <laughs> okay. So this wraps episode 57 of the John 1911 podcast. If you uh, want to follow what we're doing or updates or pictures or video of the things we discuss, you can go to our blog page at john1911.com. That's J-O-H-N 1911.com. Special promotional consideration to Mitch at A&M Promotions, our audio engineer. 
Got it right this time, Mitch. And just remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good day. See you later. <laughs>